Hello, hello, and welcome back to the show. By now you know the drill, so much has happened since we last spoke, so grab your coffee and get ready because we're jumping right into everything that went on in Hollywood this past week. And it's actually been two weeks since we last spoke, so we have quite a bit of ground to cover. Here's what you missed. More than a few things happened in Hollywood relationships over the last couple of weeks. Tons of our childhood crushes are officially getting hitched. For starters, after being engaged for only 90 days, MTV alumni Ryan Scheckler got married to Abigail Balloon, who is a registered nurse. They were joined by their friends and family and, of course, a few celebrities like Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox. She looked beautiful and their first dance was to Use Somebody by Kings of Leon and he got the date tattooed on his hand in true skateboarder fashion. Also tying the knot this week is Billy Lord. She had many iconic looks and you can see them in my show notes, but I actually want to talk about how she honored her mother, Carrie Fisher, during her ceremony. So Billy wore two of her mother's rings, the first one being one she gave to a friend, which she used as her something borrowed, and then she also wore a blue ring of her mother's that was her something blue. But it gets better because her actual engagement ring is made from the same diamond that was in her mother's ring. Also on the top of her head were braids, of course, just like her mom's iconic character in Star Wars. But my favorite part is that the people she used to design her dress had actually interviewed her mother and based her dress design off of the things they thought her mother would like based on their interview with her. All of this is very sweet, so definitely check those photos out. And speaking of sweetness, Millie Bobby Brown and her boyfriend Jake Bon Jovi made their first red carpet appearance together after months of dating speculation. The occasion was the BAFTAs, and she was rocking a little black Louis Vuitton dress next to him in a Fendi tux. She also took this time to use the press photos as an opportunity to make them Instagram official. Of course, I've linked their looks in my show notes as well. Also going red carpet official is Daniel Radcliffe and Aaron Dark who've been dating for almost 10 years, though not many know that they're together. And this outing was to do press for his new movie with Channing Tatum, Brad Pitt, and Sandra Bullock called The Lost City. And since he's starring alongside big names, it seems he doesn't really want to go back to his start. And because of that, he says he's not interested in returning to Harry Potter for the spinoff, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I really love the series. Those who have listened to me for a long time know that I am a big Harry Potter fan, but it won't be the same without him. So in my opinion, they should really be halting this until he or some of the original cast members are ready to join. Okay, let's now get into the two relationships that everybody is going absolutely nuts over. Starting with Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson, who went Instagram official last week. Now, I get it. I know people are really divided on this relationship. Some think it's all publicity for her new show and his new show. But here's what we know about them now that they're public, which makes most people scratch their head. Apparently, he has multiple tattoos of her in true Pete fashion. And she says one of them, the one that actually went viral on his chest, is not a tattoo but a branding. Now, why in the world would he get her name branded on him, you might be thinking? Well, because he told her he wants to never be able to cover it up or remove it, which is very suspicious considering how he is at extreme odds with the father of her children, who, by the way, he has never even met. Now, let's all take a moment to step out of the world of celebrity and imagine that this was just a normal relationship, one within your family even. If the guy that you've been seeing for a few months is getting threats from your baby daddy and is also not making it better by sending texts about being in bed with his wife, do you imagine that relationship playing out well? I think we can all agree that right now the main concern should be the welfare of her kids. Unfortunately for Pete, Kanye is their father, so he's probably never going to be out of the picture. And due to his mental health struggles and refusal to be medicated, it likely won't stop until they split up. And we know Pete is one for rushing into relationships, but this is probably not the right one to do so. So can someone, anyone, stop and think about the children in this situation instead of how funny it is that Pete has a 100 tattoos for Kim Kardashian? There are just bigger issues at play. 
Some relationships come in hot and end burning fast. Others are a very slow burn. And that was the case for Vanderpump Rules stars Tom Schwartz and Katie Maloney, who have officially filed for divorce following 12 years of relationship and marriage. Both of them have been very honest about their ups and downs, and they were really a staple of the show. Based on sources and their announcements, it seems like it was pretty amicable, but clearly she wanted it more. And I think we've always seen her being the one to pull away. Unsure what this means for the future of the show, considering that they are in the same friend group, but it's better they figure it out now and admit that they grew apart than live unhappily forever. On a brighter note, Amy Schumer spilt the beans about Michael Sarah being a father. When giving an interview, she said Michael also has a baby, and then she said, oh, is that public knowledge? I just outed him, and I just outed his baby. But yes, the news is confirmed by Michael, saying their son is only six months old and they are doing their absolute best as parents. Also welcoming a child is Grimes and Elon Musk, who have just had their second baby via surrogate. Though the baby was actually welcomed in December, this news was just made public. This time, it's a girl and, again, has a pretty crazy name. There's a great chance that I'm totally botching this name, but I'm just going to try it. It's Exa Dark Sidriel Musk, and they've nicknamed her just Baby Y. Now, we did get an explanation for the name from The Guardian, which stated, quote, Exa refers to the supercomputing term exaflops, or the ability to perform one quantillion floating point operations a second. Dark, she said, represents the unknown. People fear it, but truly, it's the absence of photons. Dark matter is a beautiful mystery of our universe. Sidereal is the true time of the universe, star time, deep space time, not our relative Earth time. And the name, of course, honors her favorite Lord of the Ring character. And as we know, Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker are officially trying for a baby. She opened up about her IVF journey and how it's made her gain weight. This, of course, was teased for the trailer of the new show, so we have to actually wait until it comes out to see a deeper look inside that conversation. Switching gears a little bit, there's not a ton of music and TV or crime news, so I'm just going to lump it all in together. So let's talk about the crazy stuff. After being sentenced to only 150 days in prison for his felony for false claims of being attacked, Jesse Simulette was released on a $100,000 bond after just six days. And why is this? Well, it's because he went on a hunger strike and only survived on ice water. I guess they decided that the other 144 days just weren't the consequences of his actions. After his crazy response to his sentence, which is, by the way, only 75 days in jail with good behavior, they jailed him and kept him in psychiatric care, restrained to a bed in Cook County Jail. And then, of course, he went on his hunger strike and was released in just six days. Also facing consequences is Real Housewife of Orange County star Dr. Jen Armstrong. We just watched her give a great big presentation on medical research that she's pursuing, which was really commendable, I have to say. But now she's facing medical malpractice lawsuits for leaving a patient with a disfigured face and another for medical battery when refusing to give a patient their medical records. She's also being sued by Forever Ageless, an organization claiming that she owes them over $100,000 worth of medical products. So this officially makes almost every housewife franchise have someone who's either being sued or potentially jailed. Very interesting. And before I get into the good news this week, there is some other interesting news. Both Barack Obama and Dylan O'Brien have tested positive for COVID this week, and you might be thinking that they're unrelated, but in a recent tweet, Dylan said, quote, got the vid, all good, mild symptoms, being vaxxed and boosted, and having it with Obama is very much helping, but had to cancel the rest of my press, sobering reminder that we are still in a pandemic. Stay safe and be mindful. And to that, I'm going to say, uh, hell yeah. And while Dylan's symptoms might have been mild, Haley Bieber had a pretty severe reaction following COVID. She was actually sent to the hospital with stroke-like symptoms. Doctors determined that there was a small blood clot in her brain, and because of its size, her body was able to push it through and recover, but still a very scary situation. All right, now on to the good news for this week. I actually have two things. 
The first being the news that Kanye West is banned from Facebook for 24 hours due to violation of the platform's policies on hate speech, bullying, and harassment. Trevor Noah actually talked about this, and he said it pretty perfectly last week. Quote, You might not feel sorry for Kim because she's rich and famous, but what she's going through is terrifying to watch, and it shines a spotlight on what so many women go through when they choose to leave toxic relationships. What we're seeing here is one of the most powerful, one of the richest women in the world, unable to get her ex to stop texting her, stop chasing after her, and stop harassing her. So finally, big platforms like Facebook, Instagram taking a stance on this and saying definitely not, you have to stop, is going to help the situation, I I would think. And finally, a very short note, Florence Pugh is officially in the cast list for Dune 2. So there's something to get excited about this week. And that's it for this week's headlines. Don't forget you can read more details on each by clicking the link in my show notes. If you see any headlines you want covered or have thoughts on this week's, DM me on Instagram at MeganTheMorningPodcast. And I'll be back next week to catch you up on the latest pop culture news.